Now, I've platinumed quite a few games on this channel. Hell, I've even got 100% of the achievements in an Xbox game. And seeing as I'm apparently covering games on every platform now, I've decided that now was the perfect time to use my PC for something other than playing with myself and editing to actually play a game and get 100% of its achievements. And I thought of no better game than the legendary game known as Fable. Well, the Anniversary Edition, anyway. Fable has always been a series of games I've held in very high regards, and with the new Fable hopefully in the not-so-distant future, I decided to revisit one of my all-time favourite series and get all 50 of its achievements. Now, I'm currently recording this intro after doing everything else, and I know we've got a mega long video, so with that out of the way, let's jump straight into Fable and the world of Albion and earn all of the game's achievements. Enjoy. And so our story begins in the small town of Oakvale where we begin as the chicken chasing hero himself. Now he doesn't look like much yet, I mean if it wasn't obvious from the fact that we are a kid, but believe me this is the hero of Albion in the making. Today is our sister's birthday but unfortunately we have no money and so our dad agrees to sponsor us for every good deed we do so that we can buy her a gift. Luckily a local merchant had a box of chocolates for the low low price of and so we got to work with those good deeds. We began by watching over a gentleman's shipment while he went for a dump in the woods, we bullied one of the local bullies, and we returned a girl's lost teddy bear, after which we returned to our dad and he gives us the three gold pieces we needed to buy the chocolates. With Chockies now in hand, we headed up to the field on the edge of town where our sister is and we surprised her. Well, we tried to, but she told me that she already knew I was going to give her the chocolates due to a vision she had seen in a dream, which kind of ruined the whole idea of it being a thoughtful gesture, but there you go. Turns out the town of Oakvale was about to get a surprise though, as all of a sudden bandits begin attacking the town, killing all of the locals, burning the village and murdering our family. While mourning over our father's body, a bandit comes out of nowhere and begins charging at us to take our life as well. When his is all of a sudden cut short by a mysterious man wielding magic. He tells us that everyone else is dead and that to come with him unless we want to end up the same way. Of course our little chicken chaser agrees and the man teleports us away to safety and we unlock our first achievement of the game. Turns out this man was a gentleman by the name of Maze and he just so happened to be the head of the Guild of Heroes, somewhere that we would now call our home and where we would spend the next good few years of our life training to become hero material. For now though we are shown to our room and we rest our head after the eventful day we've had. The next morning we are awoken by our roommate who introduces herself as Whisper and tells us we need to meet up with the Guildmaster to begin our training. Now this stage of the game acts as the tutorial and gets us used to the game's combat mechanics, things like the melee combat, archery combat and the magic that this game refers to as will. All quite basic but very enjoyable to use. Now this whole process takes many in-game years during which while learning the basics of melee combat are eventually put up against our friend Whisper to test our skills and when we manage to unlock the missable achievement as quiet as a Whisper for beating her in combat without taking any damage. Now you do fight her in combat a couple more times throughout the game but there is always a chance that you can take damage in any of these so it's nice to get this missable out of the way now. Eventually after honing our skills further it was finally time for our final test and this was to head into to the guild woods and take on the head of the guild himself, Maze. Again, this area just acts as a tutorial, so all we had to do was hit him a few times using each form of combat. Nevertheless, after impressing him with our skills in combat, he tells us that we have passed our final test, and so now it was time for us to graduate and receive our guild seal. And with that, we had successfully been promoted from farm boy to hero and unlock another achievement. Now that we were officially a hero, it was time to go out and actually do what heroes do best, and that's quests. With our very first quest requiring us to head to the picnic park and save from locals from wasp attacks by taking down all of the wasps in the area before eventually dealing with the queen. Taking down the queen marks the completion of our very first heroic quest and also rewards us with a trophy. No, not that kind, we get rewarded with the wasp queen's head, however showing this off to all of the people around me did nab me the Project Ego achievement. After dealing with the Wasp Queen, we are then contacted by the Guildmaster who tells us that Maze wants to meet and is waiting for us at the tavern in Bowerstone, and so with that information, we head to the lovely town to find Maze. On my way back, however, something hit me. I realised that I hadn't picked Heroic Difficulty at the start of the game, and there is an achievement we can unlock for beating the game on said difficulty. And so I decided that while I hadn't made any significant process, I'd quickly run through the beginning of the game again until we got back up to this point. Now, this wasn't something in the original Fable and was added in through 
through the anniversary edition. It's something that I've never personally played on until now and it's much more than just enemies do more damage. So yes, enemies do have more damage and it can go from being doubled, tripled or even more while also being better equipped earlier on in the game. Our XP gains from everything we do is reduced by 40% and the special ages potions that you can find only grant 100 XP. Some items are in fewer quantity, so things like potions and gems. Potions are kind of a necessity, but there's plenty of little exploits that you can do to essentially increase the shop's inventory, so that's no problem there. Everything is also 50% more expensive and sells for 50% less, making a lot of exploits within game's trading system completely useless and making money quite difficult, as well as a few of the spells being nerfed. So yeah, it's safe to say that I was going to be in for one hell of a ride, but it is a ride that we rode nonetheless. Anyway, now, back up to where we were, I decided to head back into the guild and pick up some more quests. When we come across Briar Rose, another hero, she goes on to tell us that she has an important mission in Not Ho Glade, so she can't stick around, and if we come for a quest card, all the good ones are gone already, but apparently all she thinks we are good for is cleaning the kitchen anyway, so she can go do one. After being insulted by Briar Rose, we head over to the town of Bowerstone where we meet up with Maze. He tells us that he has called us here because there are dark forces at play that put our wasp queen to shame, and that he's also discovered that our sister may well still be alive and he thought that we should know. He does tell us that they are only rumours and we need to know more before we can go about finding her so for now he tells us to upgrade our gear and continue doing the hero stuff. The first thing I did was visit the local tavern and continue to celebrate my wasp queen defeat by treating myself to a few cheeky bevies and ensuring I spread the love around. Turns out this woman couldn't handle her drink but because of that we do get the drinking game achievement for either getting yourself drunk or in my case someone else drunk. Now in regards to that last achievement you'll notice that a decent portion of the achievements in this game do provide two ways of unlocking them. Like that achievement can be earned purely by getting yourself drunk but that does take longer. But it can also be unlocked by getting someone else pissed. Which is exactly what I did. And there are many others like this. Some not as lenient as this one and only offering choices of good and evil. But we will talk about each one of them when they come. For now though, achievement out of the way. We get to meet a few more of the locals, pick up a few quests and head back to the guild for another quest card. This time we needed to make our way towards Orchard Farm near the region of Greatwood to protect them from a bandit attack. On our way there we find Whisper who seems a little bit jealous of all our heroics and suggests she'd even pick up the opposite quest card to help the bandits attack the farm instead and that we would have to beat her. Now at this point she is reminding me a hell of a lot of one of those friends you get on a Pokemon game that say they're your friend and then wants to continually battle and beat you at every opportunity they get. Anyway, back on with the quest, the path there was filled with numerous bugs and bandits that we had to deal with, but unfortunately some of them did get the better of me and we died for the very first time. Which wasn't actually too bad as it did unlock us the get rich or die trying achievement for doing exactly that, making 10,000 total gold from properties or just straight up die. We eventually make it to Orchard Farm and successfully hold off the bandit attack at which point Whisper stayed true to her word and appeared like a wild Pokemon out of nowhere for battle. Little did she know, she would lose for a second time. Time. Damn! You beat me again! How about get good? With Whisper beat and the bandits dealt with, the owner of the farm tells us he'll make sure to spread the word of our heroics and we unlock the becoming a man achievement. Eventually Maze asks to meet with us again and tasks us with heading to the town of Oakvale. Yes, that same town that we witnessed our father die in and so I took this as the perfect opportunity to continue to make a name for myself on my way there and made sure to take on as many quests as I could. Not just for the renown but also for the XP needed for levelling up my stats and magic as I was seriously going to need them throughout this playthrough. I will mention now that I did this pretty much throughout the entire game whenever I got the chance. I didn't complete every quest but I did a decent portion as well as a couple of other miscellaneous things here and there. There is obviously quite a lot I could cover but that would make the video extremely long so I won't talk too much about any of this unless I get an achievement. Just know that we did quests and we leveled up a lot in between the main quests. Thankfully while doing it this time I was able to knock out a couple of miscellaneous achievements with the first being the feed the troll achievement for giving a troll a taste of his own medicine and by medicine I mean hitting the giant boulders of dirt that they chuck at us back at them. And the second we unlocked was the hero they hold his low achievement for healing a follower during an escort quest which we got while escorting these traders through Darkwood to Barrow Fields. Eventually after some questing and travelling we finally make it back to our hometown and within seconds of our first visit back it was absolutely ruined when the girl that we helped find her teddy bear at the beginning proceeds to bring up the raid and we start having a PTSD moment. 
Shortly after that stressful situation though, we again find Maze and he tells us that although he hasn't been able to find any more information on our sister, he has heard of a blind CRS located at Twinblade's bandit camp who may be able to help us further. He also tells us that Twinblade used to be a hero like us before he broke apart from the guild and started up numerous bandit groups, and since then Maze has suspected that he was responsible for the attack, so this also presents itself as an opportunity for revenge, which of course we'll take. With that information, we locate its whereabouts and proceed to sneak past the guards into the bandit camp where we take out the numerous bandits in the area, as well as obtain a bandit disguise to gain entry to the elite section of the camp and get us close to Twinblade. Luckily for us, our infiltration was successful and we were now face to face with Twinblade, which of course can only mean one thing. It was time for a boss fight. Now, with the difficulty being on Heroic and seeing the amount of damage enemies can do, I expected this to be a lot harder than it actually was. Although beefy, Twinblade was wasn't too difficult as his moves were easily telegraphed and it wasn't long before we had him on his knees. With Twinblade now down, the blind CRS comes out from his tent and it is revealed to us that she is actually our sister Teresa. We discover that after the raid she was interrogated by bandits as to our whereabouts but when she refused to tell them, her eyes were cut out and she was left alone in the forest until Twinblade found her and took her in and even though blind, discover that she is actually a total badass in combat. She then tells us that she has seen many deaths and the choices that we will have to make between good and evil. However, she wasn't planning on sticking around and before leaving rewards us with a power that lay dormant within our blood. Now at this point we had a choice, we could either finish off Twinblade for good or spare him. Now originally we had come here on a revenge mission, however seeing as he actually took our sister in when she was left for dead, I thought I'll give the guy a second chance at life and let him live, completing the quest and unlocking another story related achievement. At this point we then head back to the guild where we meet up with Maze once more and he points us in the direction of the arena located in Witchwood and that people have been asking when we would make our heroic appearance. He also asks us that while checking out the arena could we also look into his archaeologist friend who has locked himself away somewhere in the Witchwood area and that due to his recent discovery may well have inadvertently put his own life in danger. Of course, we agree and make our way over to Witchwood, home of the arena and home of the Balverines. Once there, we find an area known as the Witchwood Stones and in it a demon door. Now, for any of you who doesn't know, demon doors are these magical stone doors with faces that will tell us a little riddle in which we have to solve in order to get them open and get the reward that's inside. This demon door tells us that essentially in order for him to open we have to guess his name, however only one person alive is said to know his name and that he definitely can't be found at the temple of Avo. So we take that information and head straight to the temple where we give the sword in the stone a good old tug but with no luck before finding a man who tells us that the demon door's name is Hits and we need to spell it out by hitting these stones in the correct order. Now be careful here as it is very easy and tempting to spell the wrong word. Eventually though, after hitting all four stones, we head over to the door and he opens up letting us inside. Turns out this demon door was hiding a very special reward, it was the archaeologist Maze wanted us to find. He tells us that he regrets investigating and researching the focus sites and he was unaware that Jack of Blades was also interested in them. Unfortunately, he doesn't have time to explain further and tells us to take his journal back to the guild instead. Back at the guild, we get our next quest card where it is brought to our attention that not whole Glade are suffering from a high number of battles Wolverine attacks and has asked for a hero to help fight the creatures off and bring down the attacks. With that we stocked up on supplies and headed over to Witchwood to make our way to Not Whole Glade. While making our way there we oddly enough didn't come across any Balverines but we did find plenty of bandits which we had to deal with and during the process managed to unlock the swinging sword achievement for hitting three enemies with a single flourish attack. <laughs> Eventually, we make it to Not Whole Glade where we find the village under attack from Balverines and of course we lend a hand in dealing with them. Now the normal Balverines at this point wasn't too much of an issue as I had quite a strong weapon and some decent stats and magic, but the White Balverine was a lot tougher and managed to get a few good hits in, but he eventually ran off presumably to fetch some more of his wolf buddies. After talking to the villagers we discover that the white Balverine was actually once this woman's husband and that he once used to slay Balverines and gives us a silver augmentation for our weapon in order to help bring him down for good and end both his and this town's suffering. At this point knowing normal Balverines weren't much of an issue I was pretty confident going into our next fight although that was quickly shattered as I proceeded to get surrounded by 2-3 Balverine at one time and they proceeded to finger my anus. 
Although we had a few deaths under our belt, thankfully the only death that mattered in the end was the White Balverines as eventually we managed to finally bring him down, taking his head for a trophy and saving the town of Knothole Glade. We head back to the village where the chief thanks us as well as gives us a letter sent to us from our sister. She tells us that she has found a book that reveals that we are actually part of a bloodline that links all the way back to the days of the Old Kingdom, as well as rumours of a sword that is powerful enough to help its wielder rule the world and gives us the book to read ourselves. With that, however, we complete the quest and unlock another story-related achievement. After saving Not Whole Glade, clearing up some other quest cards and getting some supplies, we can now turn our focus to the arena run by the famous Jack of Blades and the missable achievement that we can earn while going through it. The arena consists of eight rounds in total, all pitting us against various different creatures and enemies that we have come across during our travels, and for the missable achievement, we needed to complete all eight rounds in a single run without taking one of the optional breaks in between. Now, the majority of the rounds are relatively easy and with only a few enemies occasionally posing a threat. Even the Balverines were no trouble at all and after a few rounds, Whisper is also brought into the arena to fight alongside us. Although, going into the later rounds, he literally provided no help at all, especially against the trolls. They are honestly relentless with the rock throwing and even dodging out of the way can prove to be completely useless against them and results in your health bar getting absolutely demolished. Another reason why potions and spells are absolutely essential when playing on Heroic. Eventually though, after a continuous series of extremely close calls with death, we eventually beat all 8 rounds of the arena without taking a break and unlock the Are You Not Entertained achievement. Now even though we had successfully beaten the arena, there were still two heroes standing and of course only one could be crowned true champion of the arena, and so now Jack of Blades making his return after centuries forces a fight to the death between us and Whisper. Whisper tells us that she'll fight but she won't kill us and so of course we agreed to do the same thing. I am glad to say that she has improved slightly, she did get a few good hits in early on I can't lie, but much like all of the other times we take the win and then as agreed we leave the arena and spare Whisper, forfeiting our victory. After leaving the arena, we discover that Lady Grey, the mayor of Bowerstone, was impressed with our performance and suggests that we pay her a visit in her manor at Bowerstone North, which of course made Thunder jealous enough to threaten us. As we are being escorted out of the arena, the guard tells us that we remind him of another hero who fought here many years ago named Scarlet Robe and shows us her statue and it is at this point that we realise that Scarlet Robe was actually our mother. All of a sudden, Jack of Blades makes an appearance and tells us that she is actually still alive, however she lives in solitude as she was crushed by the failure to save her family. He tells us that we should bring him our sister so that he can reunite us both with our mother and I don't know about you, but he doesn't seem like a very trustworthy guy. Just think of the happiness it would bring her. He then goes on to reward us with the champion seal so that people everywhere will recognise us as an arena champion as well as doubling for a pass to get into Bowerstone North. And with that the quest was complete rewarding us with two achievements, the for every choice and achievement achievement for maxing out either good or evil renown, in my case good, as well as the gladiator ready story achievement for beating the arena. After leaving the arena we are informed by a bandit that our sister wants to meet with us at the grey house near Barrowfield and Darkwood. Before heading over there though I quickly did another supply run as the arena literally drained all the food and potions that I had. Now for a decent portion of the game I was heavily dependent on those potions, even though my stats were looking good, I had the heal spell and I had some fairly good armour and weapons. A lot of the enemies attacks just seemed to demolish my health bar and so it was at this point that I decided to play the merchant system in the game. A little exploit if you will in order to buy some more potions than what the merchant currently has. I'm not getting them for free and I still need the amount of gold necessary to actually purchase them, it just saves the long tedious process of buying potions, sleeping for a couple of days until the shop restocks, and then repeating the process. Now because we bought all of his potions, he was now willing to buy one of them off of us for more than what we had technically paid for one, and selling one of these back to him nabbed me the what are you selling achievement for making a profit. Anyway, achievement out of the way and potions restocked, we head out to meet with Teresa. Once at the Grey House, we find her and she tells us that she had already met Jack of Blades many years ago and reveals that he was actually the one responsible for both the raid and for cutting out Teresa's eyes. He wasn't lying about our mother though, as ever since that fateful night, he's had her imprisoned at Bargate Prison and that we must rescue her as she is the only one who knows how to find the legendary sword of Aeons from the book that she had sent us earlier. She tells us that the archaeologist we had rescued from Maze may know of an ancient passage to reach the prison and that we should aim to find him quickly as Jack's creatures are still after him and he was last seen at Bowerstone. 
So we of course make our way over there, but alas, we were too late and Jack's minions had already had away with him and were heading towards the old present path. And so of course we must now proceed to slaughter every single one of them until we reach the poor sod. Can't lie, this new enemy type is perhaps my favourite in the game. I like their designs, I like the weird sound of the metal kind of clinking and scraping as they move. I like their weapon design. They just look and sound pretty damn cool, although they were quite difficult. I found they blocked a hell of a lot more than normal enemies and if you get surrounded it can leave you in a bit of a tough situation. Eventually though we managed to slay all of Jack's minions and save the archaeologist. He tells us that he does in fact know of an ancient path we can take to Bargate Prison and of course the secret entrance just so happens to be at a graveyard, although it hasn't been opened in centuries so we would have to figure out how to get it open. The archaeologist once again goes back into hiding, the quest ends and we unlock another story related achievement. After doing some more hero stuff we begin making our way towards Litchfield Graveyard in search of the ancient entrance and on our way there I managed to knock out the summoner's tail achievement by getting our summoned creature to kill another and take its form. Once at the graveyard we discovered that the secret entrance must be behind the demon door however he would only open for the gatekeeper Nostro which wouldn't be a problem but like the graveyard keeper informs us but old Nostro died a couple of hundred years ago and now the secret's buried with him in his crypt. Thankfully he opens the gate giving us access to the graveyard and even escorts us to his crypt, although we kind of did more of the escorting due to the numerous undead but there you go. Making the way through the graveyard I of course had to check out some of the tombstones and wanted to share a few of my personal favourites. Continuing on we eventually come to Nostro's crypt and upon opening his tomb his spirit tells us to find his armour, sword and shield and that he will open the path. Thankfully we overheard the graveyard keeper earlier telling his friend that he had looted his possessions and hidden them around the graveyard and so we get to work digging up the graves and fishing in the stream to find the gear. However I found it hilarious that every bit of gear we found he always had a reason as to why it was there and never acknowledged what we had overheard. Perhaps that got washed down from the mountains. It did take a little while, perhaps a little bit longer than it should have took, but we eventually find all of Nostro's gear and return it to him, and as promised, he yielded a path and opened up the demon door. Heading through the door takes us to the circle of the dead, and upon killing numerous undead allowing the stone circle to absorb enough souls, the entrance to the ancient path opens up and we unlock another story-related achievement. Upon heading inside we proceed to make our way through the various underground chambers and tunnels fighting the numerous undead that filled the place and while doing so I managed to unlock the there is no spoon achievement for using the mind control spell on an enemy and getting him to kill his buddy. We eventually make it to the prison where we of course find it filled with guards who wasn't too keen on seeing a hero and after fighting through what seemed the whole prison force we eventually find our mother very much alive, but there was no time for a catch up as we needed to. Get this damn cage open. Everything so far was going pretty smoothly. Obviously, nothing goes this well without something bad happening, and you may have already guessed it, but as we're about to leave the prison, Jack blocks our exit and ambushes us with his minions and guards. He goes on to tell us that he'd actually planted something on the champion seal that allowed him to track our every movement and that he's now going to imprison us both until she tells him where the key to the sword is. And just like that, without even putting up a fight, we are captured by Jack of Blades and thrown into prison. And so here we are, stripped of our gear and our pride and in an absolutely lovely cell that we will be spending the next year in. Now I know what you're thinking, use your magic to kill the guards. Unfortunately that isn't an option for us as Jack has enchanted the prison to prevent the use of magic or something along those lines anyway. Thankfully we wasn't alone and we had a neighbour in the cell next door. He goes on to tell us that once a year they let the prisoners out of their cells and force them to race around the prison and that the winner gets a visit to the warden's office. If maybe a hero could get inside then we could find the key and escape right? Well that was now the plan anyway. Race day came around and I can't lie but I don't think that this is a fair lineup. Anyway we race around the prison while getting insulted at nearly every turn until we eventually cross the finish line in first place winning a trip to the warden's office. Once there and while listening to his recital for Lady Grey we managed to find a combination code for the lock on one of the three books on the desk but unfortunately the one that we managed to open had nothing in it and we were caught and thrown into the torture chamber. Another year later and it was once again race day but this time would be our last. 
we once again come first place, grab the combination and unlock another book. Thankfully this time we found the Warden's keychain and hid it someplace safe for us to use later. Turns out that was almost immediately, as the Warden couldn't find his keys and we couldn't get tortured so we were thrown back into our cell and left to our own devices. Using the keys we then free ourselves, get ourselves a mighty weapon, free the rest of the prisoners and make our escape. We eventually find our gear that at the same time lifts the enchantment preventing the use of magic and now absolutely no one could stand in our way. We find our mother and then make our escape. Let's just hope this time we didn't have the champion seal with us because I was not prepared to do another year behind bars. Thankfully this time we wasn't followed or captured by Jack of Blades but that did mean that we now had a boss fight against a Kraken that had the ability to fire lasers out of its mouth. Now, while the laser did do a tremendous amount of damage, he wasn't overly difficult. Just lure his tentacles into hitting the ground, hit each one enough times to get him to pop his head up from under the water, and then let him have it with the bow. We eventually take down the Kraken and make our escape from prison. Our mum reveals to us that the key is located in Hook Coast, but to get there we must find and activate the portal in Darkwood. She also tells us that the key will only reveal itself to one of our bloodline and that we must find Teresa before Jack does, as if he finds her he could use her to reveal the key. Now at this point I thought it would have been a better idea to stick together or for her to instead head to the guild, but no, apparently splitting up is the best course of action. Let's hope it doesn't come back to bite us in the arse later. Anyway, with that we part ways and unlock another story related achievement. Now just before heading over to Darkwood, I headed back to the guild to level up some more of my stats when I noticed that I had a moonfish in my inventory. Now these weird fish have the power to turn day into night and if we head over to Bowerstone South and chow down on one of these little buggers, we unlock the Hero of Time achievement. We then headed over to Darkwood where we found the portal our mother told us about and discovered that we needed to feed it with souls of the undead in order to activate it and so spent the next few minutes killing some more skelly boys. After successfully feeding the portal enough souls it activates allowing us passage to Hook Coast, a charming little village in the snowy wilderness and I don't know why but I really do love snowy locations in games, there's something about them that I just really vibe with. After exploring Hook Coast we discover that the location of the key has been blocked off by a strange magical barrier and our mum tells us to head back to the guild and find her in Maze's quarters as there is a book that she has found that could hold some more information and so we head back to meet her. But once we get there she is taken by Jack's minions making the whole prison breakout feel totally worth it. Although just before she vanishes she tells us to not forget the book and so we find it and take it to the guildmaster who tells us that using the information from the book he would be able to bring the barrier down. However this would also mark the final stretch of the game and so would forsake any other quest that we have picked up. Not knowing that in ways this was going to bite me back later I pushed on. We take the quest and head back to Hook Coast where we find it under attack from Banshees and so must fend them off to protect the village and after dealing with them head back up to the barrier to let the guild master get to work on bringing it down. <laughs> Once the barrier is down we head through to discover in a shocking turn of events that Maze has actually double crossed us and the guild and is actually working for Jack. Jack then makes an appearance and manages to restrain us and orders Maze to finish the ritual. Finish the ritual Maze. I'd like my key now. It's almost over and it will be easier with the boy here. So, you escaped my little cage. I'm surprised it took you so long. I trust you didn't lose too much of that precious blood of yours getting out. The Septimal Key. And with the ritual now finished, Jack gets his hands on the Septimus Key and tells Maze to take us to the chamber before taking his leave. Thankfully our sister manages to release us from our restraints before she is teleported away, leaving us to fight our old mentor. Now in terms of difficulty he was surprisingly easy, as this was the final stretch of the game and seeing as Maze was the leader of the guild, I expected him to be a lot harder than he actually was with the only thing making this fight annoying being the fact that he constantly teleports around, leading to a lot of running back and forth. We eventually take him down where he tells us that he was wrong and maybe we are in fact strong enough to defeat Jack. He goes on to tell us that we don't have long to stop him as he is currently making his way to each of the focus sites in Albion and using the key to activate them giving him access to the sword. He then reveals to us that the reason why he betrayed us was because he was a coward. He was afraid of Jack's power and for some the only quest in life is to escape death and you know what I kind of feel that. 
However, Fumé's attempting to escape death inadvertently led to his demise. And with that, another story-related achievement. With the help of the Guildmaster and Briar Rose, we then spend the next few minutes chasing Jack around Albion to the different focus sites where it seems like near enough every enemy in the game is now working for Jack in an attempt to stop us. Of course, none of them actually manage to, however, it does slow us down enough, allowing Jack to activate each of the sites, bringing him closer to the sword. With the fate of Albion now resting on our shoulders, we rush back to the guild to find it engulfed in flames and the Guildmaster informs us that they were unable to stop him and that Jack is in the Chamber of Fate. We rush inside to find Jack with our mother and sister in hand and witness as he slices our mother's throat giving him access to the Sword of Aeons. This could only mean one thing. It was time for another boss fight. Much like Maze, I expected this to be much tougher than it actually was. First we had to kill his minions around him to bring down his protective barrier before being able to damage him. And after doing this a few times and managing to bring him down to half health, he decides to switch up his tactics and instead levitate in the air and use magic to try and take us down. However, I was able to dodge most of these attacks and using my bow, I just repeatedly launched arrows into his chest. Anyway, we eventually take Jack down, which opens up a portal into the void and we are then left with a choice. We can take the sword and kill our sister to become more powerful and feared than we can ever imagine, or cast it into the void so that it can never be used again. Obviously, this is meant to act as the final choice between good and evil, and as I am going for a good playthrough, I decide to toss the sword into the void. That and the fact that it would have made the whole attempt throughout the game to find and save our family completely pointless at this point. Regardless of choice though, either one unlocks us another story-related achievement. That however does bring an end to the vanilla game story. We had managed to defeat Jack and destroy the sword. The guild was rebuilt, the world of Albion was returning to some form of peaceful normality, and we were now labelled its hero. Note that I said vanilla game story, that is because Fable Anniversary actually includes all of the content added within the Lost Chapters release of the game, which continues the game story. It starts with our hero being formed of a message left by Scythe, one of the oldest heroes in Albion. He reveals that there is something strange going on in the northern wastes, and his goal was to stop the creatures known as summoners from reaching the mainland, however, has failed and requests assistance. The only way to get there, however, is by using the Fireheart to reactivate the lighthouse at Hook Coast for passage to the Northern Wastes. Now, to get this Fireheart, we have to head through the newly awakened Demon Door outside of the Guild that will only open up to those who are worthy. And seeing as we defeated Jack and saved Albion, he considers us worthy enough to enter. Once inside, we find the Prophets of the Fireheart trapped in there, and we have the option to either save them by turning all of the tiles on the floor into a sun, or kill them by turning them all into moons. We choose to save them, but either way we gain access to the Fireheart. The Guildmaster then informs us of a legendary sword powerful enough to rival the Sword of Aeons and Jack of Blades, and that it can be found within the Guild, and that Maze before his death had recently taken an interest into finding it. We of course check out Maze's quarters where we find journal entries that literally tell us where the sword is hidden and how to get it, but of course, me being me, completely looked over this clue and gave up trying to find it until later, and instead went on a bit of a supply run. During this time, I ended up entering myself into Not Whole Glades Archery Competition, where I managed to beat the current record, unlocking the Arthur or Robin achievement. I then decided to treat myself and sort out my appearance, where I bought a fresh tattoo as well as a new haircut and beard. Doing this managed to nab me two more achievements, the Beauty or the Beast achievement for reaching match attractiveness or ugliness, in my case an absolute specimen, and the Ultimate Warrior achievement for having hair, a beard and a tattoo at the same time. We then decide to head to the lighthouse at Hook Coast and install the Fireheart. Doing so though attracts the attention of the summoners from the Northern Wastes and we must hold them off and prevent them from destroying the Fireheart until it's charged enough to call the Ghost Ship. And after a little bit of a fight, the summoners were stopped and the Ghost Ship was called. Briar Rose then reminds us to activate the Colors Gate once we reach the Northern Wastes for easy travel to and from, and we then set off on our journey to the Winter Wonderland and unlock another story-related achievement.
Once we arrive at the Northern Wastes, our task was to make our way towards Snowspire Village to meet up with Scythe. The way there was of course filled with danger from summoners to ice trolls to even Jack's minions and they were all looking to stop us. Of course they wasn't able to and while fighting our way through I actually managed to raise my renown high enough to reach legendary status unlocking the I am legendary achievement. We eventually make it to Snowspire Village where we meet up with Scythe and he tells us that he came here many years ago when the guild believed Jack of Blades was planning to use Snowspire Oracle in his search for the sword and now in order for us to put a stop to the summoners we need the oracle's help. To do this Scythe tells us to head to the necropolis and search for the four glyphs needed in order to awaken the oracle. Once at the necropolis we proceeded to dig up every grave we could in order to find the glyphs we needed. Now I'm sure there is a way to tell what spots are correct but I had absolutely no idea what I was doing which instead led me to constantly digging up the wrong glyphs that caused Jack's minions to spawn in and ambush us on top of the already unlimited spawning undead and balverines. Eventually though after a lot of runs of bad luck we find the four glyphs and unlock another story related achievement. We then head back to meet up with Scythe where we use the glyphs to awaken the oracles. Once awakened they reveal to us that Jack of Blades has managed to awaken the dormant power of the summoners and then managed to escape death by using the blood of our family to feed his new form from beyond the bronze gate. In order for us to open this gate we must use Jack of Blades old mask in order to absorb three specific hero souls needed in order to activate the shrine and with the help of Briar Rose we manage to locate each one. The first soul called for the king of the arena and so we head out to find Thunder who doesn't seem to be having much luck in the hero business. Now of course being a champion of the arena we could just kill Thunder and absorb his soul which funnily enough Jack who manages to speak to us through his mask actually convinces us to do. Of course we are the good guy in this story so that wasn't an option but Thunder does suggest that we may be able to find a worthy soul from within the arena's battlegrounds itself as many champions have fell there. We arrive at the arena to find Jack's minions and summoners have already come through here and once again are forced to go through multiple rounds of the arena. Of course we come out victorious and are rewarded with the soul we needed that we then absorbed into Jack's mask. We then head back to Briar Rose where she tells us that she has managed to transcribe the next inscription and that it calls for a heroine. Once again we could take the evil route and choose Briar Rose, I mean she's right here but of course she'd rather much stay alive and we are left with no other choice but to head to our mother's grave in Oakvale and use her soul instead. And finally the last soul we needed was the oldest soul which again at this point Jack suggests the guild master is the only way however heading back to the guild to speak to the guild master we find that he has actually heard of what Jack had said presumably through the guild seal and has straight up locked himself away. Our brothers at the guild do however offer an alternative and that would be to use the soul of Nostro who had helped us open up the ancient path to the prison earlier on. Before heading there though I decided to invest some more XP into my stats and actually managed to fully max out one of my stat trees for the that's my man achievement. Another achievement down we then head over to the graveyard to find Nostro. He tells us that he has no issues helping us however as he's a warrior his soul can only be claimed through being beaten in combat so that he may rest with his fellow warriors in the afterlife and so we spent the next 30 seconds beating on his corpse until we took him down and obtained his soul. We once again head back to the shrine and offer up our final soul which in turn activates the shrine and opens up the bronze gate that will allow us to pass through and put a stop to Jack once and for all and we unlock another story related achievement for doing so. Late, little hero. And so now this brings us to our final battle. We head through the bronze gate where we find Jack and his new form. Man. The gods and demons you fear and worship are as nothing to me. Yeah, he decided that having a normal body is boring and so instead decided to return as a dragon, although this didn't actually make him that much more difficult than when we had fought him the first time around. Now yes, his attacks are very strong and they pretty much drained my health whenever one landed so he was definitely capable of killing me quickly and even succeeded a fair few times. But as far as difficulty, that's really as far as it goes. For the majority of the fight he is chilling on the side of the arena giving us easy access to damages in his head while occasionally deciding to fly around but I feel like this was more to prolong the fight than to actually hinder me in any way. By avoiding his attacks while utilising my magic to make my attacks stronger we were able to take him down relatively quickly and use the mask to absorb his soul once and for all.
must destroy the mask. Whatever you do, you must not wear it. It's at this point we are then given another final choice between an ultimate act of good and evil. We can either destroy the mask forever bringing an end to Jack of Blades, or we can choose to wear the mask to essentially become unstoppable. Of course, I'm sure you haven't forgot we are being a good boy in this playthrough, and so we decide to throw the mask into the lava, bringing an end to Jack of Blades, and an end to the main story. In the process, unlocking two more achievements for doing so. The hashtag spoilers achievement for defeating the super awesome boss, and the great balls of fire achievement for beating the game on heroic difficulty. Anyway, with Jack now defeated and Albion returning to peace once more, that brings us to an end of the story, and now that I'm a lot older and actually understand a lot more about what is actually going on in the game, I've definitely got some thoughts on it, but I'll save that for my wrap up at the end of the video. And so you know what that now means? That now means it was time for the cleanup stage and earn our last 16 achievements of the game. But before committing to the lengthy process of the collectibles that this game somewhat has, I decided to knock out a few of the easier miscellaneous achievements first. Now for those of you who may not be familiar with Fable and its gameplay, it may or may not surprise you that you can actually get married and in the later games even have kids. Now getting married in this game is pretty simple enough, providing you're an absolute specimen to admire and have a house. You can find houses for sale in most towns and so long as you're a relatively good looking chap, you can then find most of the time any NPC and proceed to flirt with them by emoting and giving them gifts. Repeatedly doing this will raise an NPC's attraction meter towards you and will eventually allow you to marry them. Now our first achievement related to marriage does give us two options to unlock it. The first is by receiving a gift off of our wife which can be done by keeping her happy and buying her gifts until she eventually presents you with a gift, which is what I originally tried. However because it was kind of random and I had no idea when she would actually do this, I got impatient and decided to take her down to the local tavern where I flirted with another woman in front of her, unlocking the achievement instead. Next I found a group of enemies and used them to build my combat multiplier up to over 20 before using an ages of potion to unlock the combat evolved achievement. And then I obtained the last few pieces of assassin's gear I was missing and once I had the full outfit I proceeded to fart on this lovely gentleman here for the Arse Creed achievement. What's it, what's it to be? The next achievement I unlocked could again be unlocked multiple ways, and that was the Open Sesame Middle Finger achievement for opening all of the demon doors. Now, while most of the demon doors riddles in this game are easy to work out, and if worse comes to worse, I always had Google, some of them, however, do require us to do just straight up evil acts, which even though I had completed the game at this point, I was still trying to avoid. Now, another way you can unlock this achievement is by simply using the middle finger expression on one of these demon doors. Now, usually you get this expression by reaching the max level of evil which of course we haven't however for some unknown reason and i'm not sure if this is a bug or if it's meant to happen but upon completing the final mission of the game and beating jack's second form it rewarded me with all of the evil expressions and so of course i use this to my advantage and got the achievement Boy. The next achievement I unlocked was for using some of the various silver keys we have been picking up throughout the game to open up a chest. Something that I'm surprised I never got throughout the story, but it just seemed like everyone I came across as I progressed always needed more than what I had at the time. Anyway, doing so now unlocks the get it off your chest achievement. The next achievement we went for was the Fight Cluck achievement which allowed us to live up to our chicken chaser name. We headed over to Oakvale where we helped a local competition host deal with a ghost issue which in turn allowed him to continue to run his chicken kicking competitions. And once back up and running we decided to enter this competition. Now the goal was pretty simple, kick the chickens and try to get the highest score possible. Now this did take me a couple of tries as aiming the chickens isn't exactly the easiest thing in the world but we eventually get a score of 250 points unlocking the chicken hat and the fight cluck achievement. For my next achievement, I decided to avoid doing the fisherman's competition, although later on I needed to for a silver key, and instead opted to take on a quest with the naked boast equipped, which of course has us completing the quest while naked. Doing so though unlocks the that's a real lunker achievement. 
Now I had a few of the easy achievements out of the way, I decided to focus on a few of the more collectible related achievements. Now to be honest we didn't really have that many to collect, it was just a bit of a long process getting them as I pretty much had to work my way through most of the game's locations again. The first achievement we unlocked was for finding and returning 25 books to the teacher in Bowerstone. This wasn't actually too difficult as a good majority of the books can be found within the guild library, with the remaining few being found in bookshelves and occasionally in shop vendors. And I like the fact that even though this is really something completely optional and some players may never even do, the developers actually took the time to have the teacher and occasionally kids read the book or perform a play based on the book. And I can confidently say that I've never seen this done before in a game, and something that I really appreciate. I don't know, just the little things, right? It makes collecting them actually feel like I'm helping out someone and achieving something, rather than just collecting them for the sake of it. Anyway, returning 25 books to the teacher unlocks the Education Rules the Nation achievement. Sure we can. Now believe it or not, the next achievement was unlocked by helping the exact same school, only this time we were on the search for hero dolls. There are 9 of these dolls in total, however we can only collect 8 as the ninth is a reward. Obviously these hero dolls are based on the current heroes of Albion and even we have our own doll. Now most of these dolls are earned through playing the numerous different tavern games throughout Albion and beating their high score, with one exception being the thunder doll that we needed to purchase from a vendor. Collecting and returning all 8 of these dolls to the teacher rewards us with a unique Jack of Blades hero doll as well as unlocking the Fable Heroes achievement. Which brings us to our final collectible and they were the silver keys. There were 30 in total to collect and they could be used to open up the many key chests that can be found in the game which I definitely made use of as a good number of them had legendary weapons which we also needed for an achievement later. Thankfully these were again pretty easy to find and collecting all 30 unlocks us the you're a super slayer achievement. Collectibles out of the way it was time to turn to our last few remaining achievements. The first one we unlocked was the I did this for achievo achievement for simply head shot in an enemy with a crossbow while dressed up as a woman sporting a beard and red wig. <laughs> We then did a bit of shopping and purchased the remaining weapon types that I hadn't picked up yet like the Great Mace, and upon doing so unlocked the But You're a Wizard Hero achievement for either learning one of each spell type or owning one of each weapon type. The next achievement we unlocked was also related to weapons, however this was for owning 10 of the legendary weapons that can be found throughout the game. Like I said earlier, a good portion of these can be found in silver chests and demon doors and are scattered throughout the world, however a few require us to actually purchase them like the Solus Great sword or required us to actually do something in order to unlock them, much like the final weapon we collected, which was Scorm's Bow. Perhaps one of the coolest looking weapons in the game, as well as being notorious for being hard to obtain, and that's because in order to get it, we must bring followers to the Chapel of Scorm and sacrifice them. Now I spent many, many hours when I was younger bringing villagers here to meet their demise in the hopes of obtaining this weapon, which I did but not after hours and hours of mindless sacrificing. Of course it surely can't all be down to RNG and so this time I needed to find a quicker solution which thankfully I did and I'm going to share it with you before the achievement pop. So I discovered that if we hire a strong bodyguard, the one at Twin Blades Bandit Camp is perfect for this, and sacrifice him to the Chapel of Scorm on a Saturday midnight going into Sunday, it will pretty much guarantee the Scorm's bow as a reward. An easy way to know if it's coming up to Sunday is by checking the in-game days past, and if it's a multiple of 7, it's a Sunday. For example, if day 21 was approaching, you'd want to get your bodyguard and head to the Chapel of Scorm at night time on day 20, as this is a Saturday. And once the bodyguard takes his pay at midnight, you can then sacrifice him for the bow, and in my case, the horde mode achievement as well. Now I should have just continued to sacrifice people to the Chapel of Scorn for this next achievement, but I didn't and instead chose to donate 100,000 gold to the Temple of Avo, unlocking the Choosing My Religion achievement. Donation. Now at this point in the game I was only missing two more locations that I needed to explore for another achievement, however I couldn't work out where I hadn't been and wasn't really feeling searching it up online and travelling there anyway, so I decided to take up the other method of unlocking it and instead stuff my face full of apple pies until we turned into a pretty hefty lad, increasing our waistline and unlocking the definitely not on the rails achievement. Which brings us to our final achievement and that was the out of the frying pan achievement for finding the hidden frying pan and using it to smack someone in the face. Now remember earlier during the story I said that I was hoping that continuing on to fight Jack rather than cleaning up the map wouldn't come to bite me back? 
Well, it did at this moment. Now, usually the idea is you find five or six of the clues around Albion that will reveal the location of the frying pan. However, two of the quests that we get a treasure clue from just would not appear for me, and I am assuming it's because of that point of no return. It must have bugged out, and it just refuses to spawn the quests. Now, this didn't actually stop me from getting the frying pan, as I already had one clue, so I could dig it up. So I just looked up online where it could be found, and that was at Orchard Farm, so I headed straight over there. However, because I couldn't obtain all of the clues, it then meant my frying pan did the grand damage total of zero. Thankfully, I was still able to get the achievement, and after smacking someone in the face with it, we unlock our final achievement of the game. And with that being the final achievement, this brings us to the end of the video, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed playing through it again. The game was honestly such a blast and took me straight down memory lane, reminding me of when I literally stayed awake for near enough 48 hours on the school holidays just to play through this game. Being older and actually having more of an understanding of the story now though, I will say that towards the second half of the game, mainly everything after the arena story-wise, kind of feels rushed and leaves a decent amount to be expanded upon even with the Lost Chapters expansion. Despite that though, I thoroughly enjoyed the story and the game's open world. Every location had just enough content to make it feel full, but not overly cluttered or completely empty. The little things you can do in the open world like getting married to even purchasing and renting out property to earn an income. The combat, albeit simple, is very easy to get into and once you start combining spells with melee attacks, you truly start feeling like a powerhouse. Now, this little short take on the game doesn't do it justice, but just know I think it's a smashing game, and while very dated, still in its own weird way, holds up today. Anyway guys, this brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, then a like and share would be greatly appreciated on the channel. Let me know your thoughts on Fable down in the comments below, and if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything I upload. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.